All right, guys. Um, I had some people through my Instagram story say that they wanted to have some longer videos, so I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd do a bit of a voiceover here and just walk you through some of the bullet points. It's really hard to to get all your thoughts into however many words they allow you to do for bullet points. So it might be helpful for some people to get a little bit more of a deep dive into some of these techniques. So so let's give it a shot. We'll walk through here and see how this goes. So what we're getting here is what's called a three-quarter hold, and it's a wrestling position effectively, and, and it's used to help put pressure on the neck to roll the opponent with the goal of pinning their shoulder blades to the mat, which is a way that you can win uh, a wrestling match. But in jiu-jitsu, we don't use it quite as aggressively, and in fact, as you'll see, I don't want my opponent's shoulder blades on the mat. I actually want to keep them on their side. And so in, in a jiu-jitsu context, I tend to refer to this as a, as a vice grip. And, and basically, lacing my left bottom arm through his arm and around his neck. So this is an arm in choke. It's a variation of an arm triangle choke. And so I need to have his arm caught in here when I do this. I'm not just attacking his neck, okay? So when I drive my bottom arm through, I'm trying to get it around his neck and I'm, I'm going to connect my hands here. They call it a gable grip. It's sort of a wrestling term. And uh, it's basically just uh, I'm clasping my hands together, but they're not, I'm not linking my fingers together. So it's kind of a versatile grip. It gives me a lot of mobility in my shoulders and forearms and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a pretty powerful grip. So I've gable gripped my hands together here. And, and the key is that I have my, my the back of my right forearm on his neck and on the back of his head, because that's really gonna help me generate the leverage that I need to ultimately put him onto his side, as we'll see in a second. So I get this grip here, I make sure everything's tight, and uh, I've got that forearm on the back of his neck here, okay? So that's that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking for in this position. And I sort of slow it down here, and and I'll just stop it here for a second. Um, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to force him onto his side. Um, and that, that's the real critical part to this choke is, is keeping them on their side. But, but what I'm doing is uh, I'm using my back leg and my arms together because I'm trying to really get as much power to drive my opponent forward. The, the, the point of sort of the, this vice grip that I call it is I'm really trying to crush his chin to his chest as I do this because a lot of times what's causing the front roll is neck pressure. It's a, it's a very uncomfortable position for me to sort of crunch your chin to your chest as I'm driving off my back foot. It, it creates pressure and it makes you want to roll a little bit to, to relieve it. So what I'm trying to do there is get you, is get you stuck onto your side. Okay, but the key to this is that I really need you to stay on your side. So this next slide that says keeping them on their side is 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 such a major component to this choke. And and I say don't overroll your opponent. Um, and by that I mean I don't want you to get so excited in rolling them that they they fall with their shoulder blades flat on the mat. That that's a real problem. In fact, that's that's how I'll generally escape Darce chokes is. You know, if I'm really stuck and I'm really worried, I'll just sell out and go to my back. Yes, I'm giving up, you know, side control potentially, but you really don't want to get stuck in a deep Darce position. Okay, so it's really important that you you roll them in a controlled way so that they stay on their side. And, and again, you don't over roll them. And the other thing I do here is I really get I really get good base. Okay, and what I like to do is I like to get my, I'm using my left knee here, it's, I'm, I'm on my knee, and I'm, I'm trying to keep it tight to his body because I don't really want him to be able to drive his bottom knee through here early on so that he can kind of recompose guard or trap my leg into a half guard. I'm, I'm trying to keep pressure there so that I still maintain top position and, he, and I'm not giving up, you know, any sort of guard to him. I like to keep my, my right leg out wide and based because I'm going to need some pressure to help drive my arm through here, as you'll see kind of in a second. So what I'm going to do here now is, and, and one thing I didn't mention is I, I like to bring my ear to their shoulder, okay? So why I do that is a couple reasons that 
I kind of get into in a later slide, but part of it is to help keep that alignment. Like I want my head over his shoulder, over his head, over his shoulder, over the ground. Like I want that kind of stacked position to stay there. So the ear over the shoulder helps me keep the alignment. And it also, again, is a little bit of a support that prevents him from falling to his back. But it also allows me to sort of turn my body into an angle where I can really drive uh, with my lower body as well to push my bottom arm through as far as possible. So kind of in this slide, I talk about the, the establishing the, the depth of the choking arm is critical here. There are ways to finish a shallow Darce choke where you're not getting much depth through, like maybe only your hand gets through, but I find them much more difficult to finish. So what I'm trying to do here is drive my arm through all the way so that like my bicep is basically hitting his neck. And to help with that, I'm using my uh, right arm there on the back of his head to pull him towards me as I drive the choking arm through. So it's a bit of a push-pull thing here. I'm not just gonna try to drive my arm through because if I don't pull his neck to me, I'm basically, he's gonna be able to sort of arch away from here. If he can extend his body and arch and he creates all this distance, it's really hard to establish the, the arm triangle from here. So that's kind of what I'm attempting to do here, okay? So now we're kind of walking through to this next slide where I say sort of like eliminate any space. I see people that lock up this arm triangle, but you can almost see, I call them like little windows in a choke where I can almost maybe see like the back of his neck through my arms. And I don't want any of that. I want to cinch this up as tight as possible before I even attempt the choke, okay? So I clasp my bicep there and I, I don't clasp it low. I try to clasp a little higher up on the bicep. And I also do what I call like a spider walk up the up his back. So I sort of finger crawl my right arm up his back and around his shoulder blade. I feel like people get really lazy with that arm and it allows for little pockets of space. And I think when you do that against good people, they find ways to breathe and they find ways to move. So what I'm really trying to do there is really eliminate any kind of opportunity for him to breathe or escape. Okay, so now we're kind of moving into the finishing details. Uh, I'll say this, there's there's many different ways to finish the Dars choke. So I'm not by any means suggesting that this is the only way. This is the way that I prefer to do it, but I've seen it done many ways. There are people that prefer to fall onto their hip and trap their opponent's top leg. I've seen people go to mount with it. I've seen people that roll onto their back. I've seen people that like to go to almost a north-south choke. Lots of different effective ways to finish this. But for me, my priority is usually to keep top position. And so I don't like to fall onto my hip and I certainly don't want to fall onto my back because I want to keep top position as much as possible. I like to, I like to set up submissions in a way that even if they fail, I'm not really in a terrible spot. Uh, the other thing that, that gets difficult about falling to your back is that if you miss it, your arms, you're losing leverage from the top position. Okay, so part of the reason I sprawl here is to really use my, use gravity and my weight on him to help compress the choke. Because part of what's happening here is that his own top shoulder driving into his neck is, is helping me choke him. So if I fall to my side or my back, I'm kind of losing that leverage or that pressure. So I like to sprawl here and um, and use all these sort of things to my advantage because I don't want to burn my arms out. I don't want to fall onto my back. And if it's a tournament, you know, I give up top position plus I miss the submission and my arms are tired. I think that's a real triple loss in a way. And if it's something like MMA, for example, and you and you fall to your back or your hip and your opponent comes on top position, and you miss the submission, now you're in danger because you're on the bottom and you're tired. So those are some insights into why I like to sprawl. Uh, I'm not terribly worried about him trying to re-guard here either because I'm pretty mobile on my toes. And even though he might be able to attempt to sort of walk and shrimp, I've got it pretty cinched up pretty tight here. 
um, and I add upper body rotation just slowly here at the end of this clip. You can see me add upper body rotation. That's something I've tried to incorporate a lot with my with my chokes these days. It's a sort of a tip that I picked up from John Danaher, um, where he adds adding rotation to things like rear naked chokes. Uh, it just adds like a little bit of extra pressure that makes it so much more difficult to fight off. And I've been in, sort of using that a lot. And uh, I find that it's really adding to the to the choke effect because I don't want to just squeeze my arms. I want to rotate and sort of drive my bottom arm up and into his neck as well. So I find adding a bit of that rotation really helps. So we'll just look at it from another angle here again, driving that arm through gable grip. Okay, so what I'm saying here is keep tight head and body position. I don't I don't want my the last thing I want is like my stomach to get over top of him because he's going to be able to roll me and keep me off base so as I roll him I keep tight to his side because I really want to use downward pressure here to keep him onto his side okay because if I if I'm loose here and he can either roll me or roll onto his back I've lost the position so in effect I'm sort of catching them this way when they fall or they roll I'm keeping them with their shoulders aligned kind of with the ceiling like vertically and I'm stopping him with that downward pressure from really getting out of position here okay so again ear goes to my shoulder and drive through you can kind of see that by bringing my head to my shoulder I'm I sort of align my body in a way that allows me to drive the bottom arm through further I also like that it keeps pressure right on his shoulder because that's that's where he wants to escape from. He wants to drive that top arm away and down on the ground. So I find that my head is, it's a more effective position than keeping it on his rib cage. I feel like it's a more effective uh, technique to kind of go ear over his top shoulder and I can really use my neck to drive down. But it really allows me to drive that that bottom arm through, which I think is, is really important. Again, you can see my knee position is tight here as I cinch it up. Okay, I lock everything up, spider walk. Now that I've got everything cinched up, now I'm thinking about the possibility of sprawling here. Okay, so I don't want him to regard or attempt to regard as I'm locking in the choke. Can you finish it in half guard? Absolutely, you can finish it in half guard. Do I prefer to finish it that way? No, because you know, sweeps are available. If I'm committing both arms to a choke and half guard, it's not really that hard for him to start off balancing me. And that's actually what I like to do to people because I play a lot of half guard and people try to darse me all the time. Sometimes I'll wait for them to try to commit both hands and I can almost roll under and sweep them onto their back. So, so that's what I'm trying to do here. And I say like, don't be lazy with that top arm in this sort of last slide here. And that's kind of what I was hinting at earlier is I see people that almost leave this top arm in the middle of their back and they almost forget about it as if it's not an important part of the choke and when in fact it really is and again I like to walk it up almost to their scapula there really you'll feel it cinch up and ratchet and get tighter as you walk it up and I think like I said earlier keeping any extra space just out of the equation is going to make this a much more effective choke. So now that I've got this all in place, now I'm going to sprawl onto my toes here, weight down. I get the tap, and uh, and we get the finish. So one of my one of my favorite chokes. I like to pair this with the Japanese necktie uh, that I um, released in an earlier video. So check that out if you haven't seen it. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, comment. I uh, hope you enjoy the videos and uh, comment below if you if you like this format and you enjoy me talking over the videos. So thanks so much, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time.